Get busy in here, get busy in here Yeah, my squad run deep, yeah, we really in here I swear whatever you want, you can get it in here Comedy or the drama, it's a mixture in here But you love it in here, yeah, you love it in here Got reviews up in here, we got stories in here Hit the like, hit the sub, hit the bell, oh yeah Three clicks like the shoes on Dorothy in here What's up everybody, it's your boy Busy Blue And I am back uh, with a video that I've been wanting to do for a while But I had to... That just a lot, I had to really take in. A lot of my emotions and a lot of aspects before I really wanted to get on camera and be able to talk about it. Um, and that is the four part Netflix series of uh, When They See Us. Uh, it's something that I was interested in. I've been interested in it for a long, 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 long time. Um, I was like one year old, one years old when it actually happened. But um, when going to Howard D. Howard University, um, after that, um, my interest in going to law school was solely focused on making sure that I can help the individuals who... Maybe this is something trying to take over. Um, and I feel like a lot of like uh, public defenders or what have you go into those type of jobs or positions feeling that way and then there's burnout or whatever. So who knows what would have happened after that. Move it away. Um, get it. And, and. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I at least talked about it because it's something that's near and dear to me and I think it needs to be talked about. So, I'm going to talk specifically about the series. I think that I want majority of you guys to just do your homework on what happened. Um, let me give like a quick, maybe what, three minute overview. Um, but When They See Us uh, is about the Central Park Five case, which included five young men. Well, actually it was seven. Um, really it was like ten, but then it went on to seven and it went on to six. Um, one of the people that we don't hear about a lot is a Steven. Um, but it's about these five young men who, um, were playing in the park, uh, you know, at night, um, and were all arrested. They were between the ages of 14 and 16, um, but all arrested for the rape and murder, rape, um, and brutal beating of, I think her name was Trisha. Let me make sure that I have, um. Her name, like Trisha Mealy, I think it was her, her name. Yeah, Trisha Mealy. Um, and Central Park. And they all were given, it was it was just such a mis, misuse of our legal system um, and misuse of, uh, misuse and misconduct of the police um, and of our system you know, failing these five young men. And they ultimately ended up going to uh, prison, jail, uh, juvie or prison for quite a while, between six and 14 years. So, and overall, none of them did it. And the person who did do it came out later, but like, 13 years later, um, to confess for the crime. Um, so these young men at those young ages spent so much time in prison um, for a crime that they didn't commit. But do, you know, your research on it, there's so many things on YouTube, so many articles, so many things that you can look up and read and, and see if you can get as much as you can from it, maybe even before you watch this. Because I'm just specifically going to talk about the amazingness that was this four-part series. Uh... When They See Us is uh, directed and created, excuse me, and created by Ever DuVernay. She's the one who also did, you know, 13th. She did, um, what was that movie? The, A Wrinkle in Time. Uh, she did uh, Salem. Uh, Selma. Why well, I keep saying Salem? Every time I say that, I say Salem. But Selma. Um, and she's just, she's, she's a, brilliant director who definitely loves to focus on 
uh, those social justice issues. I remember I was watching the interview from her for her, and she was talking about how she's nervous that she's being put in this box of, you know, focusing on these, on these social justice issues. But, you know, if, if she doesn't do it, then who will? And she's really, really good at it. Um, but it's a, you know, screenplay that was created, well, a docuseries created by uh, Avery DuVernay, and it just follows the lives of these young men. And it basically humanizes these individuals who were just categorized as the Central Park Five. We, we stripped them away of their humanity, of their personalities, of how they look at the world, how they look at life, um, and we of, of their futures, of all of that. And we just really just categorize them as these murderers or, I mean, of the of these rapists or just kids who went to jail. And this film humanizes these individuals and their families and their stories. Um, and I... I'll say that if you... Let me put it this way. This is something that I feel just not people of color, but them specifically should. All people should watch. <clears throat> and it's not an easy thing to watch. But just because it's not easy to watch does not mean that you should shy away from it. And it's been a lot of people that I've been pushing and talking to about it. And it's like, oh, I have to wait till later, wait till later, wait till later. I just did like a Real Housewives of Potomac um, review and I was talking about, you know, they talked about slavery and there's only one plantation in that last episode in which the plantation is focuses on actual plight of the slave and what was going on under the slave. And the other ones, if you go to any other plantation, they try to make it seem like it's happy, go lucky, this and that. If people, if you keep shying away or not understanding or not knowing, it's so easy for them to wipe it away and then it'll happen again and you had no idea what to look for. And these things are not easy. They're frustration. Watching Rodney King videos, watching, <coughs> looking at, you know, Emmett Till, remember Emmett Till's mother was like, look, I mean, people don't want to see him like this, but I want to clap a, a glass casket because I want these people to see what they did, what this country did to my son. <coughs> and you would not go to the funeral because I can't see. You should feel enraged. You should feel sad. You should feel because then that will push you to actually maybe get up and do something about it. <coughs> and I say I have to say that this is going to be very difficult to watch. The amount of breaks that I took um, in between the episodes. <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, I'm getting choked up. I ain't even started yet, y'all. <coughs> excuse me. The amount of breaks I took in between the episode, um, <coughs> during the episodes, yeah, I don't know why I'm cool that. <coughs> God is like, uh, tell them, but don't give them too much. It was just a lot. And... Car time out, prepare yourself, but know that you are supposed to feel this way. Like, you're supposed... You're supposed to feel this way. And the... The signs of a good director, of a good writer, of good acting, are those emotions that you're getting. Like, if, if you're crying, if you're sad, if you're enraged, if you're out of that, one, this is true life. <coughs> so... Take that in. <coughs> Hold on. Yeah, I had to take a break. I was coughing it up. But um, if you're feeling this way, take that in. It's true to form. It's how you're supposed to feel. Um, and maybe it'll propel you to, you know, get active and want to do something in your community. But then also think about the artistry. I think that sometimes we, when we're thinking about movies, when we're thinking about film, when we're thinking about all of that stuff, we remove ourselves thinking about the acting. And you guys know I love the arts. Um, and I am one of those people who love the Emmys, love all of that stuff, because I, I really, really love, you know, directing and writing and people acting and how they're taking this role and how is it making me feel and 
<clears throat> which is why I love Shonda Rhimes. Like she makes, she brings me through all these emotions, and I'm crying or I'm laughing, and I'm, and that's how I'm, that's why I know she's good at what she does because I'm feeling this way. Um, so even while you're watching it, if you start when you start feeling those ways, it's a good thing because one, this is true to life, um, and you should feel enraged, and you should feel upset, you should feel ready to do something about it, but also think like, wow, they did this. <laughs> I'm sitting here crying like this. The acting is good. The writing is good. The 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 directing is good. Yo, they, they did an amazing job. So let's go through all four of the parts. Again, I'm not going to go too deep into the story because I think it's better for you to educate yourself on it, but just some of the parts throughout it, I'm going to like reach on. Um, part one is basically about them get all five of the boys getting arrested. Um, it starts with them, you know, going out that that night. Well, actually, I think it starts with, um, no, I think it starts, yes, it starts with them going out, living life, and that night in the park where all of the kids were out there playing. After that, it, you know, goes into these <clears throat> arrests that were being made because of you know how you, sometimes you go out with a lot of people, then there's a fight there. Not everybody getting mates, everybody running, stuff like that. Something like that. And now they just pick up all of these young men. At the same time that was happening, someone found a woman who was raped. Um, and far away in another part of the park, another woman who was uh, brutally raped and beaten. Um, and we had the lead person on this case. Um, she was new to the case, and she was new to her job. She wanted to find someone, and she wanted to, whoever it could be, she wanted to find them. And in that time frame, it was the, 80, um, the late 80s, the black people were just were an easier thing to, easier people to blame. And I'm going to give a shout-out to one of my close friends. I was about to call him by his first name. <laughs> Um, check out the YouTube channel Calvin Michaels. He actually goes like really deep into like that time frame, that atmosphere. Um, and his his channel is definitely just uh, focused on a lot of that. So he also has an album out the hard uh, the hardcover. So yo, check out his channel. Check out his album. It's available everywhere. No say I didn't do nothing for you. <laughs> uh, but he goes into that time frame, that time period. But you know, true to form. Black people were to blame, and because there were so many African American kids down at the precinct because they were arrested for you know having fun or wilding out, wilding is what they called it. Jesus, um, those were her. They, they, those weren't. Those were suspects. Okay, those are the these blacks are the suspects. Okay, so now it shows how this misuse of justice of, of justice where. They're interrogating minors for over 36 hours without parent consent, without parents being there, and coercing these kids to commit to something and doing something that maybe they had not, well, that they had not done. And I want to, you know, first of all, these young men did an amazing job in their roles and playing these roles. One specifically, I want to say his name is Jerome. Give me a second, you guys, because I want to make sure that I have it right. Um, because they they deserve the recognition. Um, Jarrell Jerome. Um, and Jarrell Jerome plays uh, Corey. I want to make sure that I have Corey's last name. <laughs> Well, let's just let's just stick with the first names. Um, he plays uh, Corey Wise. Look at me. I know so much about this. But he plays Corey Wise. And he just does an amazing job. The, the young men who were playing um, their roles was Khalil Harris, Marquise Rodriguez, um, Javon Adipo, and Ethan Harrisi. Hopefully I'm not make, messing up their names. Um, sorry, and Asante Black. But um, I want to say one of the um, young men who definitely pulled at my heartstrings was Jarrell Jerome. And uh, what's the other young man's name? Um, Khalil Harris. Uh, and Khalil, he played, I want to say he played 
Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I can't remember. But um, the role he played you can see his innocence, and he uh, apparently played someone who w it was very innocent, um, and still was kind of like that in uh, this way. And the fear, and anger, and anguish, and confusion that he brought us through, amazing. And you get you get upset watching this, especially his story. You get upset. <sighs> You get confused, you get upset, you get frustrated. Just watching this interrogation progress, I was watching an interview and apparently Ava DuVernay, she took them down to actually the actual precinct. Like this was the, the set was at an actual precinct. And it they she had cops like interrogate them. Now to be fair, <laughs> from what I understand, she also had um counselors and therapists uh, for the individuals to call after each of the days, uh, which is brilliant because of the heavy content and making sure that they um, were okay at the end of the day. So, um, yeah. Let me, I uh, just found their, um, their VIB. He played young Antron McCann. Antron McCray. Which, I see a lot of people saying Antoine McCoy, McCray, but his name was Antron. Because during the time, people in the field, they kept saying Antron, Antron, Antron. And he was like, well, nobody calls me Antron. People just call me Tron. So those people don't know me if they're saying Antron, because they call me Tron. Um, but anyway, that's what that is. And then you start to see the parents come. They're confused. You see the confusion from the parents. You see, or well, some of them, you see how each parent acted. Who knows what laws, who knows what crimes, who knows what to do, what not to do, how you're going to do it. Um, I'm not going to give too many spoilers for that part because that actually is one of the parts where uh, maybe some of your frustrations do come through, especially if you have a child or you know laws and rights um, and how things are supposed to be conducted. And to see how each parent handled that situation. Um, it's frustrating. It's confusing. Like, say, please. Um, it's confusing. It's frustrating. It's interesting, but I'm not going to spoil that. At the end of the day, knowing the story, they all were arrested and it was going to trial. So the first episode was just about them getting caught, them, what the next piece was going to be. Se second episode, uh, Truly about the trial. Um, they all get their lawyers. They try to figure out how they're going to get this done. Um, they all have separate lawyers. How is this? Now, the film doesn't really showcase the fact that these are split. In real life, they were split trials. Because remember, there are six kids. So, um, but we only call them Central Park Five. One of them pleaded out. They left again with one of the ones we don't talk about is Steven. But, um... They were they split about to three and three, and the film. I don't think that the film does a good job of showcasing that as two different trials, but I think it is great to. I think they wanted you to feel like they all of these boys are going through it together, which I think is still kind of cool. Um, and during this trial, you get to see how. How focused and cruel the system is and what they would do and what lengths they would go to not find the truth, to not find justice, but to say they did what they thought was right. And it does, a, a black life does not matter. In the sense, in or in the realm of justice, and if these five black boys have to go down for this type of crime, so be it. And we will do whatever we can to make it fit. 
What frustrates me is that I wanted to be a lawyer for a long time and I understand that it's not my job to tell you the truth as an attorney. Um, it's my, during the case specifically, because she was the district attorney, she had to prove this case. And her job is not as great as it is. She got the information from the state. Her job is to now win. Wrong or right, that's her job. And it's frustrating because it's up to the jury of your peers to say whether or not you're, you're guilty or innocent. But it's my job to at least push that you're guilty. And it's your job to prove that you're innocent beyond reasonable doubt. Um... So just watching this and the things, the tactics that they use, I remember they brought out Trisha Mealy, who doesn't even remember anything that night. They just did it to pull at the heartstrings and the emotions at these individuals. And knowing the case, it worked because they all go to jail. Um, I don't want to go too deep into that one. It's such a hard one to... It's a very hard one to watch. I remember Nisi Nash, who plays the mother of, um, not Aunt, she doesn't play Antron's mother. Nisi Nash plays, sorry, uh, Nisi Nash, she plays, oh, uh, Nisi Nash, she plays the, more, the mother of Corey Wise. She, I watched an interview with her. She was saying that, you know, they do have, they had counselors and therapists on, on the set to help us. She said throughout the, oh, the whole series, she was good. And we had a problem. The prop, the thing that got to her was episode two after the verdicts were told. And it was so heavy because she's a new mother. Well, she's a mother and she said watching those kids act this out. And knowing that that was real life, she couldn't take it. And that definitely is an episode where... <sighs> get, get your tissues ready. Get it ready. <sighs> episode 3 was a little bit calmer. Um, it goes to the older lives of the young men. Um... Antron McCray, Yusef Salam. Let me make sure that I have everybody's name right. Uh, you know, because I've been doing a lot of research on it. <laughs> well, but clearly I don't have everybody's name. Um, Antron McCray, Yusef Salam. Why are they not telling me they would? Andrew McCray, Kevin Richardson, Yusef Salon, um, Corey Wise, and there's one more I'm missing. Raymond. So... They only go through, they don't go through the life of Corey, because Corey was the oldest one, and we're t we'll talk about his story, um, episode four, but episode three just goes through now their older lives, they're out of, you know, their correctional facility, and they're trying to readjust to life. This was a calmer episode to watch. Um, I'm not going to say they had an easy time adjusting, I think only one of them even living in, no, none of them live it back in. New York anymore. Most of them, three of them live in Georgia and one of them lives in New Jersey, but, oh no, two of them, yeah, th three of them live in Jersey and one of them live in, three of them live in Georgia, one of them live in Jersey. But, um, I think this was an easier one to watch. It was the calm before the storm, but watching them try to readjust to life was, it was just a little difficult. The, the most heartbreaking story to me I want to say was 
Yeah, I'm sorry, I should have did a little bit more because now I'm getting frustrated with... It was Raymond Santana's. He... They did, they put a bit of a focus on his story in episode three, but it's almost like he never had a chance. And... The other families, they had, like, the, the love for their parents that never left. And they were, you know, really focused on trying to keep that family aspect together. The focus of their sisters. Their, like, those those families were good. But Raina Santana's, and you'll see, it was almost like he didn't have a chance. He was going back to, like, the, this impoverished area. There, there was a new family, kind of, in his home. And... He had a hard time dealing with the fact that I done did all of this time for crimes I didn't commit, and now I have to go through these things because of me being in there for something I didn't even do. Um, and it, it, it was just hard to watch. So, yeah, but it's a lot easier. It's the most easy of all of the episodes because then we get to episode four, which is the final episode where we talk about the, the story of Corey Wise. So the other teens, four teens, were still minors, and they all went to juvie and other correctional facilities together at that young age. But Corey Wise was 16. Now, Corey Wise only went down there to go with his friend, Yusef. It's the only reason why he went down to the court, I mean, to the precinct. He wasn't in trouble. His name wasn't on the list. But he thought that his mom would kill him or Yusuf's mother would kill him if he did not go with him. And it was his close friend. So he went down to the precinct with him. Um, and that's how he even got into this mess in the first place. Wasn't in trouble. Name wasn't on the list. Nobody was looking for him. He just went with his friend. Since he was over the age, he was an adult. And he had to go to Rikers Island. And... The last episode follows Corey through the several and many prisons that he went through throughout the 13 years that he was incarcerated. And the stories of abuse, neglect, the beatings, the fights, the frustration. <sighs> Jarrell Jerome deserves every award anyone could even give out. He's the only character who plays the same character, young and old, throughout the whole series. All of them actually switch. So they're young kids, and then they get another person when they're older. And Jerome Jerome plays the same role throughout the whole thing. And you don't even realize sometimes that this is the young man. He... This was one of the episodes that I stopped on the most because... The, uh, the emotions that you're taking through. They do backflashes to, flashbacks to his family history and what they were going through and his family and <sighs> it's so masterfully directed, written, and performed. And you should just watch it. You should just... Well, I don't want to give too much. I just want to give my review on the fact that it, it, the series is amazing. You know, I think it definitely gave me a Tyler Perry ending <laughs> somewhat uh, with, with regards to the guy who actually did it, Mateos Reyes. He was like, oh, I did it. And it kind of just ended like that. A little bit. I don't know. Y'all tell me. Y'all put it in the comments if you've seen it. It gave me a time here in it. But um, overall, it's an, 
it's a series that will make you think, will make you sad, laugh, angry, rethinking your position of life. But most of all, I hope that it 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 pushes you to take action or to learn more or to figure out what you can do. This actually made me go back and watch the um Khalif Browder story again because it's just these mis miscarriages of justice. It's just huh. Oh. Ever do Renee, thank you. Um, for telling this story and for all of the stories that I know you are continuing, you're, you are going to continuously um, tell and shine a light on. Like we need more individuals and directors and people like you. Um, and to the cast, like thank you for putting your heart and soul into this series. That was it's just it's it was amazing. Um, shout out to the Central Park Five for your perseverance and your tenacity and allowing this to not die and continue continue to get your story told. They did get a settlement of like $41 million from the state and I think they're still pursuing of a case with the city. So we'll see how that goes, but um, it's amazing. Yo, have you guys watched it? Tell me what you thought about it. I didn't want to go too in-depth with everything because the, I feel like this causes you to research and look and really go into action and that's what it's supposed to do and I'm hope because if you don't me telling you everything about it is not going to stop you or is not going to start you to do anything but I feel like going to this movie humanizes those people first and you'll be able to really do your research and find a lot into it I this is definitely one that I can watch over and over and over again, and I still want to. I, I don't think there's enough information I can find about or get from it. Yeah. If you want to know more about me and everything else that I do, you can find me on Instagram and on Twitter, Busy Blue, no space, no E. Um, you can also find me on Facebook, The Busy Blue. I, I, I really employ everybody to go and watch When They See Us on Netflix. It's an amazing series. Um, grab your tissues, grab your souls, um, and then after that, I'm, I hope you're you're ready to grab your advocacy aspect and go out there and do something um, about it. Um, I'm about to go get busy, and you guys stay busy. Until next time.